Good morning, everybody. Sunday morning. And today is no ordinary Sunday because today is Divine Mercy Sunday. So for me, at least, I have this extra special joy, this joy in my heart, because I can just feel the love and the mercy and the joy of Jesus. Because his mercy is just something unfathomable. And it's something that should give us great, great joy. Joy for ourselves, joy for the world, joy for the people we're praying for. Just absolute joy and hope in all circumstances. If we have enough trust in God's mercy, well, we could be on the guillotine and they're about to kill us and we could still be smiling, saying, Take me, Jesus. Alleluia. So on that note, also, I got an inner locution from Jesus last night. The inner locution, Jesus, was actually quite sad as well. So let's have a read. My child, how I suffer tonight as your world is falling apart, and so very few souls avail of my infinite mercy. Consider your lotteries and how much enthusiasm people have to buy a ticket in the hope of winning millions and never having to work again. My children, my divine mercy is like this, but in the spiritual realm, and so infinitely more valuable. Imagine all your spiritual debts paid off and going directly to heaven. Yet sadly, and so very, very sadly, so many souls have no interests. They do not even believe in a heaven or a hell or a purgatory and their lives and live their lives like there were no consequences. My children, if only you could see purgatory and see the agonizing pain of these souls. If these souls could come back to earth, they will be more fervent and prayerful than any. Oh, my children, how sad. How extremely sad, and yet how much, my children, you console me, you who know and trust in my mercy. My children, time is running out, and justice has already begun. Pity the souls who did not avail of my mercy while they had the chance. Well, what can you say to that? What can you even disagree with? What Jesus is saying is that his mercy is unfathomable. And especially this promise of divine mercy. The promises are to wipe away the temporal effects of all our sins. So in other words, if you were a big sinner, for example, and ordinarily, if you had a conversion, a went to confession, you still might have to go to purgatory for quite some time because your soul will be damaged from the effects of your sins, even though, of course, you're forgiven. But the promise of the divine mercy is that by doing the Divine Mercy, and on Divine Mercy Sunday especially, and this special Sunday, you can get this grace, this type of indulgence, if you like, and it means that if you were to die afterwards, then you will go straight to heaven, and you wouldn't have to go through the purgatory that you usually would have had to go through. And Jesus is making the analogy between that and between winning the lottery. You know when sometimes we see on the television there's the Euro Millions or something and people from all over the place, they're excited, they're going to the shops, they're buying 50 Euro worth of or 50 pounds or more worth of lottery tickets. Why? Because they're thinking, wow, if I won that money, I'd never have to work again. I'd never have to think of anything. I'd be free and happy. Of course, often we hear afterwards they're not, but still, in their world, if you like, they think, if I want that money, it will be like heaven on earth, all my prayers answered. And Jesus is saying, his divine mercy is a bit similar to that, but in the spiritual realm. But because the spiritual realm takes on infinite and eternal, or infinite anyway, proportions, eternal proportions, really good, we go on forever, okay, eternity. So as a result, it's way more valuable, way, way, way more valuable. And yet you see Jesus is sad because he sees that so few people, relatively speaking, will go to a Divine Mercy Sunday. So few people will have prepared with the confession, with the um, promises and with the conditions for the Divine Mercy Sunday. So few people will maybe even bother to pray the Donina or to talk about his Divine Mercy. And of course there are some people that will go and will People that are going will go to a church and birds with a feather flock together and our church might be full. But considering the millions that live in our cities, one or two little full churches here and there is nothing. And so Jesus' heart is very, very sad 
And he's also saying, in a non-threatening way, that the time of mercy is running out and that these souls are just going to be so devastated. Now, of course, you might think, what do you mean the time of mercy is running out? God is merciful. He'll always be merciful. Well, of course, that bit is true. But the thing is, we live down here and we even saw, for example, during the COVID virus, when all churches got closed, people couldn't go to mass, people couldn't go to confession, people couldn't avail up at the sacraments. And so easily something like that could happen again. There could be a war. There could be something else that Jesus could allow to happen. And it could suddenly mean, just like that, churches could be closed. It could no, not, no longer be possible to have a divine mercy someday. And all of these promises that Jesus um, promised us, it would be no longer possible to avail of them. Be just like if the hospital got bombed tomorrow, you wouldn't be able to see the doctor, you wouldn't be able to see the consultant. And as a result, you might end up dying, basically, of a condition that ordinarily you could be healed of. And so it's the same thing. Jesus is warning us, and he's warned visionaries around the world, and the seekers of Medjugorje, and lots of people are saying the same thing, that we're entering and have already entered, only this is the start of it, we've already entered into the time of justice. When terrible things are going to happen, terrible pangs, terrible disasters are going to happen. And basically Jesus is saying that when these times really kick in, it will be impossible, almost impossible to avail of his mercy. And these very souls have missed out. Now is the window of opportunity, and has been the window of opportunity for the last good few years. And so finally, then Jesus is saying, if you could only see the souls in purgatory and their agonizing pain. And he's not saying that in a threatening way. We all know souls in purgatory will get out of purgatory and be in heaven. So he's not saying that in a ha-ha, look at me, such a macho or such a God that loves suffering. But he's saying, no, these souls in purgatory suffer greatly because their souls are not purified. And that could all be skipped if the very souls in purgatory had, you know, gone to Jesus' divine mercy while they were alive. And so he's basically saying that if these souls could pop down out of purgatory and live their lives here for another month or another six months, they'd be the most fervent, prayerful, Jesus-loving souls ever. And so in no way is Jesus trying to frighten us in an unhealthy way. But yes, in a healthy way, he's trying to convict us. He's trying to tell us. He's trying to show us. And so what? Well, with all that, he is extremely happy that those of us who have been given a grace, because it is a grace, to know his divine mercy and to um, be in the inner circle, so to speak, that we can console him and we do console him. Now, we can't take away all his sadness because he has such sadness for the size of the world and for all the things that are happening. It would just be impossible. It would be like, for example, if a mother was very sad because, I don't know, five of her children suddenly died well we could console her and we could help her and we could love her but we can't take away that sadness because she loves those people and so it's the same with us we can't take away jesus sadness at the state of the world we can't take away his sadness when he sees so many people just not interested in his divine mercy and when he sees the time running out but what we can do is we can console him we can bring souls to him both in prayer and physically, we can invite souls along as well to um, the Divine Mercy Sunday and to pray with us. And we can do our very best as well in our own lives to live lives of love, to live lives of holiness, to live lives of Divine Mercy, and to live lives as best we can that please Him in every action from big to small. So on that note, from London, I hope you have a really beautiful day. And if you haven't done so already, Start adoring and coming to the Divine Mercy, even if you haven't done any of the Novena, even if you haven't done anything, try to find out about it. It is serious, it is worth it, not just for yourself, but also for the world, for your neighbourhood, for your community, for your ancestors, for souls in purgatory that might be in your family. You have a, a responsibility and also it will bring you great joy and great happiness when you experience at a deeper level. Jesus' infinite divine mercy for you and for your loved ones. So on that note, from London, from me, have a fantastic day. And yes, let us raise high the name of Jesus and his divine mercy. Thanks for watching.